The autumnal countryside is a veritable artist's palette of vibrant yellows and burnt oranges, no more noticeable than in Western Serbia. Based in the brutalist yet chocolate box city of Užice, we've already seen the impressive Stadigrad as well as taking a day trip to Bajnabashta to visit the house on the Drina and Rachar Monastery. This time, we're hitting the road, or should I say rails, to the tiny Mokragora. We're jumping on the Shagan 8 Heritage Railway, often described as one of the most picturesque historic rail lines in Europe. Good weather? Check. Logs? Check. All aboard the Shagan 8. Right, good morning everyone and welcome. This is Mokra Gorda in Western Serbia. It's about 10.45 a.m. on a Sunday morning. It's slightly cold, but it's not too bad. The reason I say the time is because I need to check out of this place in about 15 minutes and I thought I would show you around. I don't normally do this, but it's somewhere a little bit different. So let's go. <laughs> As you can see, the weather is stunning today. There's one video I needed good weather for. It was this one. Let's start outside. So this building is like a big stone building with like this wood panelling with these wooden shutters at the top. It's very much like an alpine mountain feel, you know. You've got the logs outside the uh, front there. As in the Bainabashta video, logs everywhere, right? <laughs> and as you can see, it's um, 10 out of 10 on booking.com. Wooden flooring. One thing I always notice in Serbian Airbnbs is this sort of L-shaped sofa. It seems to be very common. And one thing that I absolutely loved when I first got here, the lady had the fire roaring. It was absolutely boiling. You've got a kitchen. Um, yeah, this nice front room. The Wi-Fi is really good, by the way. I managed to do three English lessons last night without a problem. The bedroom, obviously I've been sleeping, so I've cleared the bed. There's the mirror, lovely. And the bathroom, my place in Ujitse has got one of these. It's amazing, it like heats up the bathroom in, on a cold morning in like seconds. It's awesome. Hot water immediately, you know, and when, as this is somewhere, you know, quite secluded and in a mountain area, you, you know, you wouldn't expect to have hot water all the time or power working all the time, but honestly, it's wonderful. The cats have come to see me. Hello. The cat whisperer. Hello. Ginger cats are the best. Okay, we said goodbye to the cats and also my Airbnb host, Milena, she's lovely. Um, so this place, Mokragora, it's effectively like a little mountain village, if you like. There's literally nothing, um, but there is back there. There are a couple of little shops selling all the use, usual stuff that you'd see in like a shop and go in Belgrade, you know. And there is an ATM just up there. I was a bit worried because, you know, going to a little tiny place like this, I've come to many like this before and ended up with no cash. Mokragora is very cute. I mean, look at this. It's classic mountain countryside. You've got these vehicles. What are they like? Steamroller things? I don't really know. Um, and basically, it's about an hour from Ujitse on the bus with a bus company called Aroma. And it stops in Kremna, I think that's it, on the way. But yeah, it doesn't take long at all. And you're here before you know it. Today is Sunday, so I want today to be a bit of a relaxing video, taking into account the last two. Climbing up to a fortress in Ujitse. I fell over doing that and scratched my arm up to pieces. Didn't put that in the video. And also, Vinabashta walking to that monastery where I did both of my knees in. Oh, I just walked up a hill. I'm uh, at the railway line. We're gonna go somewhere else first though, but look, there's a Yugo in the shadows next to the train line and a train up there. It's time to be a train geek again. It does remind me of um, Thomas the Tank Engine, 
Sodor, isn't that the place that Thomas the Tank Engine was set? In uh, Ujitsay there was Thomas the Tank Engine on the, the sign by the tunnels. It reminds me of these, you know, old style trains in like mountains and those sorts of areas. And it does smell of like oil and old trains. Feels like I'm in an old train museum that I swear I used to go to when I was a kid. And you have that smell of oil and chemicals and coal, things like that. I'm heading to a place called Drivengrad, which I can't pronounce, um, which is just behind the train station. Of course, there is an easy way, but naturally I choose climbing a hill. So much for this being an easy video. <sighs> I think the road's up there. I'm not gonna lie, that wasn't easy, but I have mini croissants, brilliant. All right, I've got my breath back. I'm at the top. For once in my life, could someone just not build something at the top of a hill? Um, that'd be great. <laughs> um, do you have to pay to get in? I've got a funny feeling this might be a bit of a tourist trap. I think I may have been correct regarding the tourist trap thing. It's um, 250, or might have been 15, um, DR, um, for what was a film set. I've got to admit, this isn't the best 200 DR I've ever spent, but you know, it is a touristy thing. I'm sure if I was from Serbia and I'd seen the movie that was filmed here, Life is a Miracle by Emir Kustanica, I probably would appreciate it a bit more. It reminds me a bit of that place up in Mexico with the Wild West film set and the can can dancers, um, minus the can can dancers, um, because it is a bit kitsch, you know, it's not a historical location, it's a uh, film set after all. I don't know if you can see because of the shadows, but yeah, each street is called after someone that was important or you know admired by the film director Che Guevara, and there are other ones located. Stanley Kubrick was another one. Another name for that place is Kustendorf in German, and that was his name, like a nickname, Kusten, and Dorf village in German. Um, and also, I think I read somewhere that uh, he built it because it was like a reflection of an old town in Serbia where he grew up. I might have completely made that up. I'm just making things up now. Okay, I'm back down the hill of death, back at the rail line, heading up that way to the station. Got about an hour and get some drone shots, maybe have some more mini croissants, and then get on the Shargon 8. in here but there's a carriage at the other side with the door open I guess this is what we're going to be getting on but obviously a running train wooden benches little cabins bits for your luggage up there old school okay I've paid my ticket it's it's upside down, 1,000 dinar, which is basically 10 US dollars, which I think is really good, considering it's about two and a half hours long. You go through four stations around the mountains, and um, yeah, I did email them to book online, just in case. I'll put the email down below, but I think unless it's sort of peak season, which at the moment it's not, you can probably just turn up, but you know, I would advise emailing them just in case. Accidental good timing with the drone, David. Well done. We saw the Shargon 8 come in and then the actual engine part of it detached and then went down, back down another track because obviously it's got to go back the other way. I've got a drink. Let's get on the train. Yeah, I'm not 
Okay, we're off at the first station. We have, I think, 10 minutes here. I heard the word desert. Um, here's the train, the Shagan 8. I can't really see what I'm looking at. Um, this is really cool so far. You go through so many tunnels and um, you know you can see like the smoke rising from the funnel as you go through the tunnel. It makes me think of like, you know, the olden days of, you know, old steam trains going through tunnels and, you know, black, smoke everywhere. Um, I need to get some cigarettes, let's see if she sells them. Okay, obviously I can't talk inside when it's moving because of the noise, um, but we're going off again, I think, to the next station. Station number two. <laughs> okay, I'm a bit confused because I think where we stopped was like the end of the line and then we went back again. Yeah, because the train decoupled again. We're now somewhere with apparently a ginormous tree, the largest um, trunk, that's the word, in Serbia. Um, well, this is pretty, isn't it? Nice, yeah, I'm not really sure where we are on the map. So I'm just gonna guess. Um, yes, a pine forest, wonderful. Stop number three, it's Yatape Station. Deset Minuta Pausa. You can guess what that means, 10 minute break. Even though I've pronounced it completely wrong. Um, I think this station is um, known because it's a station which no one has ever bought a ticket from because it's literally middle of nowhere. This old lady seems very um, emotive about everything. Um, she's a bit of a guide woman, I think. She's not really, but it feels like it. It's really pretty, isn't it? Look at those colours with the train. This is awesome. Right, I need the toilet. I must say, this is a little bit confusing. I've got this thing, I feel like a proper tourist. Um, I know where, what station we're at. Oh, it's ja Yatape, that's right. Um, um, but I don't know which direction we're going in. It's rather complex, but whatever. Um, it's good fun, anyway. Look, Sharganate. The final stop, at least I think it might be the final stop, is um, Golubici. I think this was made again for that movie that I mentioned earlier and there's apparently something called a crazy stone like a big rock and if you touch this stone apparently you receive a gift to the heart good luck with that Okay, this is the stone. I haven't lit this yet, but the nice lady gave me one. Um, yeah, we're at the crazy stone. Yeah, touch it and you receive love. Well, apparently I receive cigarettes. It's all good with me. Am I seriously filming a rock? Uh, <laughs> we must be nuts. Okay, fingers crossed. That abuelita, the um, 
little, little old lady. She is absolutely amazing. She's a gem. A, she's giving me a cigarette. But whenever anyone gets off, she's like telling people about, you know, what it is we're seeing and stuff. Um, it's brilliant. I guess you must have to put like a coin on there or something if you want to get your love. To be honest, I'm not too bothered. I'd rather have chocolate cake. Right in the distance down there. I don't know if you can see it. There's like a monastery or little church. Look at this, man. We've got to get back on. They're blowing the whistle. Back in Moklogora. Ah, uh, do Virginia. <laughs> that was nice. It took about two hours, I would say. Yeah, like I said, it was a bit confusing. You go to right at the end first and then get off and then come back and go to the other three spots. Um, it was nice, but I'm absolutely starving now. I could quite literally eat a decomposed hippopotamus. Probably won't find one of those here. Um, I've got to go to the bus stop now. Let's pray that the bus is actually going to come. Hi, Han. There's me. Um, did I mention that that railway line is 100 years old? 1921 construction started, so I guess you could say it's 96 years old because it was finished in 1925, but you know what I mean. 1921, 100 years, so it's a good time to be here. Centenary, is that the word? Whatever. Okay, there was a souvenir shop, and I think there's a restaurant as well. Um, but if you're wondering why I'm not eating at the restaurant, it's because the bus is coming in like 40 minutes, so I don't want to risk getting stranded in the back of beyond. Okay, I'm being a bus wanker. Um, in between us, UK TV show, it's a joke. Um, I enjoyed myself today. It's very much a thing I think would be good for kids, so, you know, if you have got screaming brats, you can put them on a train and shut them up for a few hours. But seriously, it was very nice to, you know, go out in the mountains in Serbia. You know, when we think of Serbia, we just think of these grey buildings in Belgrade, right? There's a lot more to Serbia, especially when you come down to the west. So I've loved it. It kind of reminded me when I was a kid. We used to go to this little railway called Bluebell Railway. It was like, was it something similar? I don't know. I can't remember. It was like 30 odd years ago. So anyway, next video. Um, honestly, I don't know where it's going to be from because I've kind of got a plan, but that plan keeps changing about 9 million times. So, um... We could be in Khrushchevats, we could be in Niche, we could be in the Natskabanya, or somewhere else equally as difficult to pronounce. So check out the end screens, um, you can check out my whole Balkans playlist, um, there's loads of videos, um, and subscribe, like and all that, and I'll see you next time, catch you later.